Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. We're here in Miami, South Florida. What's the Haitian oh, rum? Oh my God, the best. We call it Barbon Cool. That's where the magic happened. Marcus, this is special. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What are you doing? Like, enough. I'm not trying to kill you, Marcus, don't worry. Santé. 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 Prosperité. La paix. La paix. Nice. Are you bobo? Mm. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do we got here? Yeah. What do we got here? What? <laughs> what? With watercress sauce. This is what we buy in the street. They mash it up, dip fry, and you dip it in that green sauce, Ooh. which is got a little spicy. You know what I mean? That's a mm. perfect appetizer right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This, this food right here, this like mm. love making. Good. I'm Chef Marcus Samson, and as an immigrant born in Ethiopia and raised in Sweden, food to me has always told a deeper, more personal story. It's a path to culture, identity, and history. Ah, now it's a party. I'm going across the country to learn more about America's immigrant communities and culinary traditions to see how food connects us all across the United States. Normally when people think about immigrant culture to Miami, Cuban is probably the first one that uh, comes up. Definitely always a laughing vibe. But the community that I've always been intrigued by that I don't know that much about is the Haitian community. The Haitian American community over the years have faced a lot of stigma, being a black community, being an immigrant community, but specifically being an immigrant community from a very, very poor country. But here in Miami, the Haitian American community is really proud and the Haitian spirit is definitely played out in the cuisine. The food is very rustic. There is a level of sophistication, but also roughness. It does have some French nuances to it, but it's the goat bone in, the fish you eat it bone in. Everything sort of requires both a hand, napkins, and maybe a fork and a spoon. We're about to get into it. Mark, we're actually not in Little Haiti right now. No, we're, in we're not. South Beach. South Beach is a tourist area, and then you have an authentic Haitian restaurant called Top Top. Yeah. What's up with that? You got it. You got some explaining to do. What's going on? <laughs> well, by having Top Top here, it's yeah. really to introduce Haitian culture to Miami. Yeah. And this place has been here since 1994. Top Top is an institution. So, what does Tap Tap mean? What's the name? Tap Tap is just the, the, the way of transportation. Okay. In Haiti, it's like those little it's like cars. like tuk, tuk Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like a taxi. You, yeah. You know, they go from A to B, jump inside, and they go. When I decided to go to Miami to learn more about the Haitian American community, the first call I did was to my buddy, Mark Baptiste. I've known Mark forever, and he is an amazing photographer. He's been shooting all his life. He shot my wedding in Ethiopia. And Mark is beyond proud of being Haitian. Like, whenever I see Mark, there's a couple of things he will always talk about. His kids, his next shoot, and Haiti. Mmm. Thank you, Mmm. What do we got, That's man? a fried pork. Ooh. I've never had griot before. Fried pork. You put a little, little bit, little bit of lime, and then you add all oh, the pickles. The pickles. Pickles is something between sort of a relish and a hot sauce. There you right? go. And then what do we got here? A little bit of vinegar. It's a little bit of vinegar. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Uh huh. It's really <laughs> crispy on the outside, and then moist inside. It's super delicious. Does this reminds you of home. Is this what you grew up on? Oh yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. So when did the Haitians start coming to Miami and America? 
Well, he go back to you know to our ancestors come uh, as slaves. Yeah. Um, and then in the 70s or 80s when the boat people started coming. Yeah. From the 1950s to the 1980s, Haiti was ruled by the dictatorship of Francois Duvalier, also known as Papa Doc, and his son, Baby Doc. They were notorious for their corruption, violence, and repression of the Haitian people. Many people fled the country and came by boat to Miami. I mean, to get on a wooden boat, to challenge nature, yeah. and to make it to the shore of Miami. You're right. It's rough sea. It's rough sea. They're trying to create a better life for themselves, by any means necessary, mm. whatever it takes. And then after the earthquake. 2010? January 12, 2010. We took like uh, 69,000 Haitians. Oh, wow. Actually, at least 40% or 50% of them were in Miami. Yeah. Because you know the spiritual language, you're gonna get your food, you're gonna get your community, yeah. you're gonna get help because they have to rely on other Haitians that speak English because it's like a hub. Yeah, that's the base. Yeah. Haiti has endured many natural disasters, but the massive earthquake in 2010 caused incredible devastation. It displaced 1.5 million people, and a lot of them came to Miami. Wow, um, a week after the earthquake, I decided to go to Haiti. I didn't expect how bad this thing is. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is devastation. I was shooting, shooting, some point I have to put my camera down, start crying, and I said, what the hell? It was, it was tough. Till today, that, that just cut my heart. It's horrible. And how is Haiti doing now, like eight years later? A lot better. Eight years later, unfortunately, we're doing a lot better. And plus, the city of Miami kind of embraced the Haitian community. Ooh, what do we got here? Okay, oh, so my. We have the grilled fish with the lime sauce on the side. Ooh, oh, and peppers. And then we have the vegetarian legume with the uh, nice. mayo. Almost like grits in a way, it right? It is a grits. It's called, yeah, it's a grits. Oh, thank wow. you, man. And then you got the legumes? The legume. Nice. Just indulge yourself. Ooh. Ooh. And then we got a little fish. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Now you're talking. <laughs> and you like it? Wow, this is good. When I taste the legume, mm -hmm. I taste sort of the journey between Senegal, Ghana, all the way to Haiti. Like when I think about southern cooking and the link between sort of shrimp and grits and fish and grits, you think about where that came from, mm -hmm. from West Africa via Haiti. I taste that right right here. Yeah. So the poisson mm -hmm. with the grits. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> so you just give the whole world history here, because it's all start with motherland. It's all yeah. start with Africa. This is yeah. similar we are yeah. in, in in culture to our food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when our president came out to say that he doesn't want people from Haiti to come, I got mad. Dude. Yeah, man. We all got mad. And it was not. It wasn't just the Haitian community. Yeah. He singled out the Haitian, Africans, uh, uh, like Niger me, Nigerian. Yeah. You know, it hurt people's feeling, and then they were outraged, and they're still outraged by it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we're having a conversation about it, that's yes. invoked change. And then that's the beauty of this place, you know. Yeah. It's really to have a conversation to, to educate people about yes. it. And change has to come. Mm. I think it's super important now more than ever, in this very intense moment of time, to keep curiosity and dialogue and to learn about your neighbor that may come from a different place. Food, music, art are incredible door openers to start this conversation. You're my brother, man. You asked me to come down. You know, wow. I have to. I have to. Thank I have you to. So much. I have to keep it real for you, baby. I appreciate baby. it. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you. Too. Once you come about 20 minutes away from South Beach to the northern part of the city. You hit this beautiful area called Little Haiti. One way to know that you're in Little Haiti is that the storefronts all have these murals and it's written in Creole, the Caribbean French language. I'm going to see this incredible muralist called Serge Toussaint. He has these iconic murals all over Little Haiti. 
How long have you been doing this? This is incredible. Oh, man, pretty much all my life. Do you do it first on a piece of paper? So you no, know what you're no, going freehand, into? it just... Nice. Yeah. When I first got here, everything was written in English. Yeah. And most of the people speak in Creole. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed some of my, my, my stores, uh, the soda bottles, the, yeah. the sandwiches, hot dogs, mm. you know. So people don't need to know how to read. Yeah. You know, it's a store. It's a billboard. Right, billboard. But I realized that it would have been nice to have some Haitian artwork that everywhere. speaks to too. the community. Exactly. So I paid the, the Neg Maron yeah. with the Haitian palace. And then the, the Citadel, yeah. it was the eighth wonder of the world. Yes. So, sir, you are documenting the history. Yeah. Right, it's important to document your, your culture. Yeah. Because most of the time people talk about Haiti, they always talk about the bad side of Haiti, but they don't want to talk about the beauty the of beauty. it. The beauty. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to go to a, a library mm -hmm. for you to learn about Haiti. As a muralist, as an artist, yeah. I really want to have a history on every wall. Nice. Yeah. Welcome to Lakai Tropical Ice Cream, located in the heart of Little Haiti. Lakai Tropical Ice Cream have been in business for the last 36 years. My dear friend Lehman started with the ice cream. When I come here, there were Hagen Daz, Baskin Wabin, and TID popped up, tropical ice cream. We make about 12 different flavors, but myself, I love the passion fruit. But we have another one in Creole. We call that uh, Coosol. Ice cream became famous, and then the customer, the Haitians, were looking for something else. So then Lehman started the bakery. In our bakeries, not only we have bread, we have something called tablet. This is Haitian candy made out of peanuts. And in the bakery, we focus in pâté. If you go to Haiti, every walk of life consume pâté for breakfast. And that's what we do here every day, and it's been so fresh. The name Lakai, it means home. It's a place where if you are looking for a Haitian in town, this is where you want to come. So this is something that we really take seriously in our heart. We really want little Haiti to be our home. What's up, Nadesh? How are you? Good, how are you? Nadesh Green is a journalist that worked for NPR here in Florida. Before that, she worked for Miami Herald. What so is this? This is pate pade. Oh, mm, smells good. It's good. This literally is just like fried dough and goodness. Um, and goodness. <laughs> that's what it is. Yes. To. It is a Haitian patty with smoked herring. Ooh. Um, inside. Uh, sometimes they put pickles on the inside. Yeah. And onions. Yours has eggs, boiled eggs in it. Mine does not. Um, but it's good. Mm, I grew up in Sweden. I thought I had every way of having herring. And yet there is a new way. Mm -hmm. mm. This is breakfast. It's everyday snack. It's yes. just, and it lasts really well. You don't need a microwave, you just throw it in your mm -hmm. bag and you're good to go. Mm. This is more of like the rustic, like making Oh, for your, the people. For the people. I like that, um, so. yes. Like a herring pocket. And people make them differently. I mean, some folks will stuff different things in them, but typically you find a smoked herring. This is delicious. Mm. As a journalist, Nadej is covering social economic issues, specifically in the Haitian community. So where are we right now? So we are in Little Haiti. So this is Notre Dame Daiti Catholic Church. Mm. Um, it's often referred to as the living room of the Haitian community. Oh, nice. Um, I grew up going to church here. This was where a lot of Haitian immigrants landed. My parents were actually migrant farm workers. Wow. So this was home. They lived here in Little Haiti. Oh, what is this? This is the Little Haiti Cultural Center. This is the marketplace, and this architecture is built reminiscent of Haitian gingerbread architecture. Oh, cool. So when I was growing up, this was like a vegetable market and stuff. Yeah. Like you would go in here and you would see like the old Haitian ladies selling fruits and veggies and whatever wares. Now it's kind of a community space. It's used for different things. Yeah. And this is Liberi Maput, where you'll go to pick up Haitian texts yeah. um, in Creole, in French, or in English. Awesome. Pardon, bonsoir. Bonsoir. Were you born here or in Haiti? I was born here in Miami. I was born here in Little Haiti. <laughs> T-I-E-T, or the Little, as we say it. 
but you didn't aspire to stay here, right? Mm -hmm. Like the dream was to move to North Miami or you wanted to move to Miramar and Broward mm. because it used to be an area that wasn't the preferred space to be. It was a predominantly black immigrant community that sure. was poor and working class. Now you want to be close to downtown mm -hmm. Miami because that has been revitalized. Yeah. And Little Haiti sits in the middle of all of that. So this area has seen significant change. Um, in some cases, some people were forced to sell their homes yeah, or were pushed sure. out of their homes. And renters who could no longer afford it moved to other spaces. So while you still have like Haitians who still live here, mm -hmm. it isn't the thriving hub of Haitians anymore. So do you live in Little Haiti? I do not. I can't afford to live in Little Haiti, actually. It's just much more expensive to live here than it used to be. What's the conversation around that? There's been conversations about maintaining what remains, right? Because you still have the very rooted Haitian identity yeah. happening here. Uh, you might still come here for Haitian restaurants. And so how do you balance the tension of what was, what is, and yeah. what is to come? Although a lot of Haitian Americans have moved out to the suburbs of Miami and don't live in Little Haiti anymore, it's still the heart and center, both emotionally and culturally, for the community. One interesting thing, it used to be that Haitian culture was only in Little Haiti. Yeah. That is not the case anymore. So you go up to like North Miami-Dade and there's yeah. Haitianness. You go to South Dade and you'll find it. It's like in the same way in Miami, if you ask someone like Cafe Con Leche, you know yeah. what that is. You sure. know what an empanada is. Like you know what guillo is. Yeah, and yeah. You know what piclis is. Like you don't have to be Haitian to partake. Nice, nice. It's an example of how embedded the Haitian yeah. community has become here and how Haitian culture yeah. has also trickled out. We're going to visit Sandy in the northern part of Miami. She and her mom's gonna teach me how to cook a very important soup in the Haitian community. Soup Jamon. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Mom. Oh, we're busy already. Yes. Hi. Yes, with mom. Bonjour, Meet madame. Marcus. Bonjour, Marcus. Ça va? Ça va, Marco. My name is Sandy Dorsonville, and I'm a first-generation Haitian-American. I do community development and cultural programming here in Miami. Haiti was a country built by African slaves, occupied by the Spanish at one time, colonized by the French. I think what makes Haiti interesting is that because we were one of the richest and the strongest slave colonies, we were able to keep a lot of the African traditions and the African values that our ancestors instilled in us. Today we're making soupjoum. Soupjoum, what, what, what's the meaning of soupjoum? What is it? It's a really traditional Haitian soup. We refer to it as pumpkin soup, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's more of a squash. Nice. So my mom already started off Mm. Cooking the meat separately. Oh, there's meat in the pumpkin soup? Yes. This is beef shank. Wow, it smells amazing. It's already been seasoned. Oh, with the bone in, so it's nice and juicy. Yes. Garlic, parsley, thyme, black pepper, clove, and put lemon juice, orange juice. Um, mm. Tomatoes. Ooh. Salt, pepper, scotch bonnet pepper. Scotch, of course, scotch bonnet. Of course, a little spice, always. And then we're also adding chicken. Wow. What's happening in here? So in there, we have cabbage, celery, potatoes, carrots, leeks. And what are we going to do? We're going to puree that? We're going to chop that in? Or Traditionally, we my mom likes everything hearty. So we, yeah. she doesn't really, the only thing she purees is the pumpkin. The pumpkin. But the vegetables stay whole. Mm. Who taught you how to make this soup? My mother, she used Ooh. to cook it, cook the soup, and I watch her, what, how she's doing mm. it. Most people, they don't use recipe. You no. put it according to your taste. Yeah, a little bit of this, little a little bit, bit of, of that. that. So these are ingredients that are easy to find easy in to Haiti, find. so. And even you don't have money, it yes. won't cost you much to make a soup. Yeah, so if you don't have money, maybe you don't put beef and, and chicken you, in. No, you get chicken in your yard. Yeah, you in your yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So what can I do? Can I chop up some carrots? How yes, can I help? Yes, yes. So I just want to ask mom, when did you come from Haiti to To the United States. Yes. 1973, by myself. Wow. At that time, we have a dictator. dictator, and it was hard. Mm. I heard that the United States, you could do anything you want, as long as you want to work. After work, I go to school at nice. night, two hours, and sit mm. in the class and sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're tired. I'm so tired. Did you meet your husband here? Yes, I met him in school. Mmm. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so you were not that tired. Mmm. Sure, sure. So tell me more about the soup. What's the significance? A lot of people don't realize that it's it's really our independence soup. It's yeah. Haiti's independence soup. Mm. So during slavery, um, the masters would always have soup on Sundays. Um, they would have a pumpkin soup, and the best choice meats were saved for this great meal on mm. Sunday, and the slaves were not allowed to have the soup. Mm. So after the slaves revolted, and in 1804, independence was officially gotten, the first thing they said was, let us have soup. Let and us have soup. Let us have soup. And that's the legend, that every single pot on the island had soup in it that day. How do I say that in Creole? No pal? Bue soup. No poil, bue soup. Perfect. Nice. It's something that every single Haitian does, no matter where they live, on the first of the year to celebrate the independence of Haiti. So, you think uh, the slave master had scotch bonnet in their soup? Not at all. Not that at was the all. Africans, right? The, the Africans yes. added the scotch bonnet. And then also, the, the more African version of the soup is heartier and yeah. thicker, whereas the French version of the soup is, is thinner and almost everything is pureed. And I, for an I'm, independent soup, we needed something strong yeah, yeah. and hearty strong. and heavy. Yes. Being Ethiopian, right? Maybe we poor, but we're not poor in culture and history. Mm -hmm. And with Haitians, you feel this level of pride, a sense of, oh. you know, being the first black republic, right? Exactly. I think that pride comes from the fact of knowing that we, um, we're not given our no. independence, but we fought for fought it. Fought hard. Hard for it, and mm. we earned it. And we, we consider ourselves, um, as Haitians, as the mother of um, independence in the Western Hemisphere. I love and that. And even as the country goes through turmoil and things happen, but that's always at the core, that we know um, our history proves that, you know, we're a strong country and that we can basically deal with anything. Anything, right? Good? Very good. Marcus, I think you can test taste Ooh, now. I'm ready. You're ready. Nice. Come. And then you, you put like this. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. Mm. It's beautiful. Mwah. Mm. Mwah. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> soup Jumon is more than a soup. It really symbolizes Haitians' independence. I just think that's fantastic by itself. And once you start mm. eating this soup, you start realize how complex it is. You have the pumpkin, you have the vegetables, you have the chicken meat, you have the beef, beautiful orange notes to it. It's so delicious. Congratulations. Thank you. It's worth all the effort. Everything, and you feel it. Like, it's all coming out. The, mm -hmm. the garlic, the onion. You hire me when you, you have your restaurant. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Marcus, you're sweating. Listen, I'm African via Sweden, so I get the, this is where the adopted kids are struggling. <laughs> okay. It's hot, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Shola. <laughs> Shola. The historical importance of the slave rebellion can never be overstated. There are a lot of reasons why there was a successful revolt. One of them is Creole, this hidden secret language that the slaves were talking to one another. Creole language was created on the plantations by African slaves. You find Indian words, you find Spanish words, you find African words and French. And Creole was necessary in order for them to talk between themselves. 
And thanks to this language, they were able to get together and kick the French out. They beat up the army of Napoleon Bonaparte. Some people, they see Haitians, they think that uh, we are voodoo people. They think it's a bad thing. But uh, it's the same way. The language, the Creole language was created on the plantations. These slaves kept their religious practices. But the minute they got in Haiti, the master will baptize them. And that's the reason why you got the mixing, the voodoo they came with from Africa and the Catholicism. <laughs> Voodoo is a religion of the people. They believe in saint. They believe in, in spiritual prayers. They have their ritual. They have their own culture. At this corner of Little Haiti, there is this oasis. From the outside, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's this incredible community garden. Gardening and gardens are really important to the Haitian community. It's run by two gentlemen, Jeff and Theo, a.k.a. Mr. Sully. Jeff is also a minister at a nearby church, and they're going to show me around and really give me a little bit of a lay of the land. I heard this rumor that all Haitians are they have a green hand, they are they're, they're gardeners. Is yes, that true? That's pretty, pretty much. True. That's pretty much. Our people are, are garden yes. keepers. Yeah. Garden keepers. Let's walk over yeah. and see yeah. what we got. Yeah. What, what, what do we grow here in the garden? Uh, as you can see, we have bananas. Yes. Different color green here. Yes. Yeah, this is sweet potatoes. Yeah. The, the pigeon pe peas. The pigeon peas. Yeah. And kalaloo. Yeah. yeah, this is, that's what we call it, kalaloo. Yes, of course. This is all African ingredients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kalaloo. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Does the garden remind you a little bit by so like being in Haiti? Oh, yeah. Well, it's the same thing I grew back in Haiti. Yeah. So, organic. Good. Organic. Okay. Like, we don't, like here, yeah, we, don't, we don't use chemical. No. If I need something, like across the street is my house. Yeah. I don't need to buy mangoes, avocados. You can just go over in your garden and, you, and you're good, you're self-sufficient. Yeah. And uh, that's the cement contra. That's the one I make the tea with. Ooh, this is bitter. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, that, that, that one for medicine, that's very good medicine. When you enter Jeff's and Mr. Sully's garden, it takes a minute to understand the lay of the land. And quite honestly, you might not ever understand it. It's more an organized chaos, but you realize you're in Miami, but you're really somewhere in Haiti instead. In Haitian culture, there's a tea for everything. There's also a culture that may or may not go to the doctor for everything. They might rely on traditional medicines that are much older, and it's always connected to the garden, to the herbs. Wow. Smells good. And this tea would be for? This medicine is good for blood sugar. Yeah. It's good for cancer. Cancer? Yeah. I do it my own medicine before I go to a yeah. doctor. No, 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 that's too much. Wait, wait, wait. How much? You tell me how much. No, Give me a little no. bit more. <laughs> you can. Give me a little bit more. You can put a little bit of salt or a little bit of sugar. No, no, it's fine. Okay. I got you, I got you. Uh, they say we have all those from Africa. So as of as of African descent, we come with our culture. Yes. This tea has such a floral note. It's like drinking a flower a little bit. It is a flower. Yeah. It is a flower. So most Haitians are very spiritual. Yeah. Do you think there's a connection between spirituality and, and, and the plant? OK, this is a good question. Maybe the minister take yeah. that question. You know, in the beginning, uh, when God created the world, no doctors then. Yeah. So God made the plant, 
it is a spiritual leader with it connects is some connection with uh, the spirituality yeah. with it. So they're linked together. Yeah. yeah. But in my view, I can see that the Haitian go further than that. With voodooism, they have a lot of belief on plants. Yeah. They tell you this tree, they can dump it, boil it, and they make a liquid out of it and make you drink it. That can heal your, your, your disease. Sure. So nature and disease and survival and spirituality, yeah. it's all connected. Yeah, each plant doing their, their own work. Yeah. I love Jeff and Mr. Sully. You know, they really remind me of my uncles that were fishermen in Sweden. It's a different pace. It's a completely different rhythm to an approach to the day, but it's very much connected to nature. It made me appreciate food, work, labor, and the culture around food in a completely different way. Miami is the number one place, I think, for me as a chef to get authentic, typical Haitian food. Today I'm gonna get all my ingredients to actually do the pickles. Pickles is a coleslaw, it's spicy, it's acid. You'll find it all over. They eat it with the pork, they eat it with fried plantains. And I got a little bit of cabbage, carrot, grated, a little bit of uh, lime. I like to put more stuff to it. Give it a twist of mine. I was born in Haiti, Port-au-Prince. Grew up there, raised there, and then after a while I moved here to the state. And then became a chef. I went to school at Le Cordon Bleu. I was brought up with the fine dining through my grandmother growing up, you know, with my family. But I used to run away and be in the back kitchen eating with the cooks, you know? I love people, people's food, you know? Miami is the land where there is a lot of farmers. In Ovaloga, you got farmers down in Homestead. You have farmers by Lake Okeechobee. You know, you have all these places in Miami where we grow everything organic. Yes. So if you're picky like me, this is the best place for you. I'm at the Maché ICN, and I'm gonna meet Hoppy. Hoppy is a local activist and community organizer. He also works in real estate, so he wears many hats. Hoppy is passionate about the Haitian American community, and he wants to get young people involved, both culturally and financially. When you go to South Beach, the water, the sea level is like right there. It's Within right 10, there. 15 years, it'll go in the water climate change. Yeah. TIT is the only place where the the, we will be fine if the, if the water comes. So it's mm. like, it's, we're not flooded wow. here. So everybody want to be here. Mm. So what we've been trying to do is trying to keep the community what it is, you know mm. what I mean? TIT and trying to keep the culture. Yeah. Between hurricane season and rising sea level, Miami has huge problems with climate change. But Little Haiti is one of the highest elevations of the city and it was once a community that was poor and nobody wanted to touch, has now become valuable and really, really attractive for developers. Did you grow up in Haiti or did you grow up in Miami? I've been here since I was four years old. And what did TIT mean for you as a child coming up? Dude, it's like Superman. You, you go home and get power. Yeah. That's how we feel here. That's this how is like, it is. Whether you go to college, you go to university, yeah. you move anywhere else, you gotta come here because come it's where the culture is. Yes. You know what I mean? You, you come here to Tambu place, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, the, it's still the, the African culture is still here. Yes. And everything's still here. Yeah. I think it's really important that pride. It's pride, you know? We, we've played a, a big role in, uh, in the world when it comes to ending slavery and things like that. It's not, it's not common knowledge. They don't teach yeah. you that in school. Yeah. When we celebrate Black History Month, we do not celebrate Haiti in it. Yeah. We don't talk about Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Mm. Dessalines was the greatest general to ever live. Yeah. We don't talk about yeah. Pétion. These people were pioneers. We don't talk about these people. That's why yeah. it is our job to educate the kids about the culture so we keep it alive. Yeah. 
Hoppy is taking me to one of his favorite fried chicken places, cross town in the northern part of Little Haiti. To get there, we're gonna jump on a local minibus, which is really Miami's version of a traditional Haitian tap tap. You see all these businesses here? Mm -hmm. Last month here. Oh, wow. All of them. And you could tell the gentrification is happening with this. It's contractors and all this stuff, so, yeah. But, look, that's one of the businesses. I hope it stays so my kids could see it, come here, eat with them, enjoy this chicken. I didn't know Haiti had fried chicken. We love fried chicken. Mm -hmm. And plantains. Fried chicken and plantain. Nice. So me and my cousin will come down here from after school. We'll just be that tear this thing up. Yes. There's always a line here. Hobby, what do you think most restaurants that we've seen in the community are basically takeout restaurants? Yeah. Very affordable, very delicious, but there are not so many sit-down that you spend hours. Because people are on the go. On the They're go. They're working. You in Little Haiti, the average income is $21,000. Yeah. The people need to go to work. Yeah. It's crunchy, man. The chicken is crunchy, and the plantain is crunchy. It's, it's fried well. Usually what I do is I just marinate it like mm. that. Mm. You know what I mean? So everything get a little piece, a little yeah. something in there. Uh, that did not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get it in there. I'm going to do that. Delicious, delicious. So in an ideal situation, where's Little Haiti in 10 years? The goal that I see for Little Haiti, we want to be Little Haiti. We want to have little homes. About 75% of us right now are renting in Little Haiti, maybe 10% owned. So nobody really owned because we didn't have financial education. Mm -hmm. Now, this generation here, we're educating the youth about financial education, yeah. financial literacy. We tell them about credit. We tell them about life insurance because we need to put our pants up yeah. and really make something happen. When it comes to a financial education, I want everybody together. I want, I want, I want to unify us. And our flag, it says, L'Union Fela Force. Yeah. Let's see if we can see it here. Look, L'Union Fela Force. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Together we're strong. Wow. Or something to fall. But it doesn't just come like this. You have yeah. to create it. Yeah. If you want it, you build it. Hoppy is not the only one that passionately cares about developing and taking care of little Haiti. There's also a group of artists and entrepreneurs fighting to keep a Haitian presence in Little Haiti and its neighboring communities. What's up, man? How are you? Welcome, brother. Thank Good you. you Thank man. you for Good having me. You. What a beautiful space. Yeah, that's Max's space over there. Oh, nice. What's up, boss? How are you? Pleasure to meet you, brother. Good. Bash. How are you? Nice. When I meet Max, Bash, and Fabrice, you cannot talk about them without thinking about the good word hustle. Fabrice is this incredible designer. He's worked for some of the best houses in the world. He's had his own line. And then Max has been part of the nightlife scene in Miami for a long time, but also is part of a think tank for small businesses in Miami. And Bash is following in both Fabrice and Max's footsteps. Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. The three of them have invited me for lunch, and we're gonna discuss why it's so important to keep both businesses and creativity right in Little Haiti and its neighboring communities. Like, who cooked all this beautiful food? I know, I know you guys did not do this. Do not tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fash's mom makes the best griot in town. Ooh, that's and you know what is griot, yeah. right? Nice. Griot is made with the pork meat, yeah. and then she makes nice. the chicken with the sauce. Or the peas, yes. Which is like a hard chicken. I don't know how exactly how to call it in English, but delicious chicken, let's Of say. course, it looks great. So my father jumped in. Oh, damn, jumped some, in? So nice. that's the legume. He does it with steak. Oh, nice. So He don't play. Yeah, nah, he's not playing at all. And then they decided to do a little white rice. Yeah. Sauce foie, which yeah. is the bean sauce. The bean and sauce. then Bash's mom did the jojo. Jojo, oh, nice. jo -jo with jo -jo. a little bean she puts in there. I love it. Bon appetit, bon appetit, bon appetit my brothers. I'm so into this mushroom rice. Jury John John is like one of the main dishes in Haiti. And every parent does it a different way. Some, I know that some people put cocoa in it, like yeah. coconut. But I gotta say, Bash's mom makes it one of the best ones out there. Mm. When you taste it, it's almost like this umami flavor. Yeah, and right? then the, dry, the drier the mushroom, the, the better the flavor. Mm. And then so what they do is uh, 
They boil the mushroom, so from the water from the mushroom, that's where they cook the rice with, so it gives it that flavor. So, you guys gotta let me a little backstory. Like, yeah. all of you guys are creative, yeah. and you're here. How do we end up in fashion? Like, how do we end up there? I was born on the island, I was born in Haiti. Mm. And when I was 12, there was a lot of political instabilities. Sure. So, I went to high school here. But I've always been like you, very fashion oriented. Yeah, I always yeah. like to put things together, yeah, sure. colors, nice. you know. And when you grow up in Haiti, they never tell you you can be a fashion designer, no, no, no. you know. But like, Haitians when are you so stylish, dude. Right? Yeah, but yeah. like when you yeah. tell your dad I want to be a fashion designer, he's like, what? Like this kid must be crazy. So, no, no, you know, it's not a profession yet. It's yeah, not yeah. a profession. Yeah. In the Haitian community, you're taught to be. Doctor, lawyer, this, that. Oh, the five jobs, oh, of course. Sure. Police on <laughs> yeah. You already know. The five. You already know. Being right? a cook is not one of them. Yeah, it's, it's, not. Not it's not. It's not. Working at the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of them. Me and Fab, we always have this 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 conversation. As Haitian, we say, "So pas qu'on est What does that mean? What you don't know is bigger than you. Oh wow. Meaning like. Yeah, you can always see what, what, they sh what they choose to show you on TV, but there's always like different perspective. Yeah, it's interesting, man. <laughs> like, I, w I grew up mostly in America, right? So I'm more of like the Americanized Haitian, mm -hmm. so to say, right? But like, one of the things with the earthquake and especially things that are tragic, it really reminds you how we're all interconnected. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what You're I'm saying? Good. So this is part of the process of giving back it's super important for us to come back to our communities and, and do things and inspire these kids, especially as creatives. Max been my mentor and Fab been my big brother yeah. that I never had. Nice. Three Asian creatives come from three different backgrounds. Yes. Three different journeys, but somehow, some way, life found a way to connect us to together. To share and connect. And Work challenge, together. Challenge each other. And contribute. Not, not even work. And challenge contribute. and contribute. Contribute to the exactly. community. You know what I mean? And that's the that's beautiful nice. thing about it. I've been very blessed and fortunate to meet these yeah. two icons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially at this moment in time, if you're Haitian and you're, you're having any sort of success, it's time to come back get home. involved and come back home right. and inspire the next generation. Look, yeah. There should be a certain solidarity you know, yeah. especially in this neighborhood, especially in this community. Because when I first moved here, I would meet a lot of young kids. The parents used to tell them, don't say you're Haitian, speak English. They didn't, they didn't say they were from Haiti. And you know, one of the biggest um, responsibilities I feel that we have is to really showcase what Haitian culture is about. There's a lot of Haitian people doing a lot of great things sure. all around the city. Yes. And this is maybe the time to kind of invite them and be strong in one community. Max and Fabrice are really important role models for the young Haitian Americans. Chin -chin. Chin -chin. <laughs> they are great examples that you can be creative and you can also forge your own path. They're also role models to other fellow entrepreneurs to say, hey, you can come back to Little Haiti, you can set up shop, start businesses, and make the community thrive again. Let's get involved. Let's get involved. All right? Yep. Thanks, man. Soccer is such a global unifier. I always look at myself as a failed soccer player. That was my first love, that's what I wanted to do, and it was really bitter that day that I got cut, but I took that bitterness and moved it into food. And bitter is a really good flavor, by the way. <laughs> Cooking in soccer is very similar to me. In soccer, you're part of a team. It teaches you humility, and you have to train really, really hard. You gotta listen to coach. In cooking, the same thing. In that kitchen, you're part of something. There's always someone else that works just as hard as you, and you're gonna listen to chef. And it has a strong sense of camaraderie of both communities. You can do it all over the world. So tonight, I'm getting in on a pickup game with Bosch and his friends, and I can't wait. Hi.
Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We had some Haitian cookies. You want to have some of them with like maybe some cremas or something like that? Right, let's have it. I'm hungry. Let's hey, why good. not? <laughs> we do crema, we do all of that. Okay? Let's do it. All right, guys, since we didn't get a chance to have dessert for lunch, so I have uh, some cookies, some long birth. Ooh. It's not the right thing to do, but good. you know, we're Haitian, that's how we do it. <laughs> nice. And then, Sivi got the, Sivi got, you got the crema, Sivi, oh, yeah. right? Oh, got the crema. crema. What, 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 is, what is crema? Um, it's, it has a lot of thing in it. <laughs> uh, it's a mixture of um, milk, uh, sugar. Nice. Uh, dry little, coconut. Dry coconut, mm, lemon. And, and of course, uh, alcohol, you know? Yeah, what? alcohol is the best. <laughs> That's my favorite That's drink. That's his favorite drink. He likes it. Oh, it's like Haitian Baileys. Yeah. Nice. With a better taste, though. Yeah, before. <laughs> <laughs> when would you actually drink crema? Whenever, if we have a birthday party or anything like this. Mm -hmm. It's also very big during Christmas. But you know, like, cremas, though, is everybody make it their own way. Their you own know? way. Everybody had their own touch into nice. it. Nice. That's true. When you're a kid, this must be the everything, right? It is. Everything. You play it, you run all day, you come in and you get a cookie like this. It is a kind of pop tart, but better. With like a, a lot of sweet on top of it. Yeah. The, yeah. the Asian way. Sugar is on top. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's a good snack, man. Thank you for bringing it back. Guys, good day, man. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. mate. Cheers. Cheers mate. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Like we say in Creole, santé. 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 Cremas and cookies. I feel like I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the cremas, but. <laughs> Tonight, I'm gonna have dinner at Chef Tia's house. She's a classically trained chef, cooked in some really cool restaurants, and I'm gonna get introduced to Haitian barbecue. What do we got? What do we got? How are you? Chef Marcus. So good to see Thank you. Thank you. Thank what? you for coming. Wow, were you cooking already without me? Yeah. Chef Tia, right now, runs a catering company, so she definitely knows how to cook for a crowd. She's gone back to her Haitian roots. And I think that balance between having French techniques with Haitian home cooking, it's a perfect blend for her. You got the crew yeah, right up, here, man? the guys. That's my dad, friends, brother. You? Yeah, I see why you brought a lot of meat. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're yes, gonna... you see those big men? Big boys. In Haiti, they love big meat. Boys. So we got goat, we got chicken. Pickles, conch. Conch. I'm very excited about the conch. Chef Tia has conch on the grill. The conch is a shellfish enjoyed throughout the Caribbean. It can be eaten raw, ceviche style, chopped up with a lot of lime and mango and so on, or it could also be in a curry. I love it. Let me grab your tongue. On the How side. long have you been cooking? Oh my gosh, all my life, chef. Who taught you? Like my who got you in the game? Grandma got you in the game. Oh my god, my grandmother, the whole family is cordon bleu used to have Sunday um, dinner in the whole family. Yeah. And that's how the table used to be every Sunday. Wow. But it was a challenge to introduce the fine dining world yeah. to the Haitian cuisine. But we are allowed to make a Caribbean food be elegant and sexy and beautiful. Yeah, love so it. So once you dip it in here, we put it here. And then ah. we let it grill, and then you dip it back in. So it's marinated, yes. and it's in and out. Oh my. Good. Yes, and good. I know you love spice. But spicy is good because you live long. When I look at my grandmother, who just turned 99 years old, her Spread sister is 100. They all love spicy food and give them the skin of the chicken, give them the skin of the, oh. That's the conch. Mm. What I did, I had to break it down, pressure cook it because yeah. it's tough. Yeah. So now that juice becomes the stock. So what we did is dump it in here, and then nice. we put it like that. Okay. Yes. And then the more we dip, the thicker it's getting. It's the nice. same thing with the meat. So, so the you meat, go back and forth. Exactly. Back and forth until we have that golden look. Then we know it's ready. Oh, How's no, the no. chicken? It's good. Let me tell you, that's the epice. Epice. Epice is a mm. traditional Haitian basic. You yes. know, a lot of Spanish, they have the sofritos. They yeah. have everything that they do to marinate their food. So the epice would be? And green bell pepper, scallion, thyme. Yeah. Um, clove. Nice. Um, the foundation would you exactly. cook with. Exactly. It's like exactly. something you put into everything, exactly. right? Mm. Hey, are we ready to eat? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Let's go. <laughs> bon Thank, Thank you. you. Jump in, guys. Yes. Jump in. Yes. 
So how's the food chef? How's mm. the rice? I'm eating. I don't know what about you guys. Sarah, you see someone quiet? That's me the food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on, bro. I'm eating. <laughs> the food is definitely not shy. It has tons of flavors, great chili heat on it, but not just heat for heat's sake, really layered. And that's that step of marinating, grilling, dipping back in the sauce, grilling again. It builds on the flavor. We just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Chef, for inviting us to your home and to your, into your family. The food has been amazing. And what I appreciate about Haitian culture is that it's so rich in terms of history, pride, and love. And we appreciate what you brought to the country, the stories, the entrepreneurship, the friendship, uh, the struggle, the oh. journey. So let's drink to that. Thank you yeah. so much. My time here in Miami, specifically in Little Haiti, has taught me a lot about the Haitian American experience and community. It's like drinking a flower, maybe. Yeah, it is a flower. <laughs> the love for family. If I've been my big brother that I never had. The love for the home country. L'Union fait la force. The level of pride about what it means to be Haitian the music, the art, the culture, and the food. This literally is just like fried dough and goodness. Um, and goodness, <laughs> that's what it yes. To. But also their tenacity and their survival instinct through all of the things that has happened to the Haitian community. They always come back stronger than ever with incredible pride about Haiti, but also being a Haitian American today in Miami. Marcus, is there anything similar to this in Ethiopian cuisine? This reminds me actually more about my grandmother, my Swedish grandmother, chicken soup. The cabbage, the carrot, the rusticness in it. But this is, this is even better, I love it. Actually, I should have said that. I apologize to my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she told me how to cook, I can't just go out of her like that. So this is good. <laughs>